Greetings. My name is Kenyon Hunter. I'm the program coordinator within the Ames Teacher Training Program in Cameroon, abbreviated TTP Cameroon. The strength of teaching only depends on the appreciation of the learners. Francisco Sanchez. People will forget what you have said. They will forget what you have done, but will never forget how you made them feel. Maya Angelou. Stories have to be told or else they die. And when they die, we don't remember who we are or why we are there. Sumon Kid. Hello to you and welcome to the fourth training unit, Epistemology and Applications of Mathematics of the third training module, Teaching and Learning Mathematics. Have you ever wondered, have you ever watched, have you ever watched a child who is told a story? For example, your child or the child of a family member, that of an acquaintance? How was this child? What was he doing while being told this story? Was he listening or was he indifferent? How was his attention? Was he happy? Did he remember anything from this story? What was the content of this story? As you may have noticed, children are naturally interested in hearing a story and adolescents and adults are not left out. Indeed, how much time do we spend in front of the television? As you can see, the information that we can listen to during a newscast is stories about current events. TV soap operas, movies are also stories played by actors. An animal documentary or a cartoon is also a story. Our daily life is therefore made of history. Moreover, even our conversations in a taxi, a teacher's room, are also stories that we tell ourselves whether they are based on facts or quite simply imaginary. Moreover, in African societies, tales, fables, enigmas, parables are the most used means to convey our cultures from one generation to another. So, as a math teacher, do you think stories can have a place in math education? How many times have you used stories in your classroom? What types of stories were these? In this training unit, as you guessed it, it will be about history. On the other hand, it will not be a story about heroes or superheroes from a television series, but a story about mathematics. Because mathematics has a history unlike what society in general thinks, which sees it as a finished product, something frozen. The history of mathematics allows a double journey. It sends us back in time because the knowledge of now was built by the humanity of yesterday. It also sends us into space because knowledge must be restored in its context of construction. We then speak of mathematical epistemology. The applications of mathematics have been widely discussed in training unit eight of this module. During this training unit, we will mainly answer the following questions. What is epistemology? Why epistemology and mathematics? What is the interest of epistemology in a mathematics course? How to conduct an epistemological study of a mathematical concept? What is epistemology? Epistemology is the philosophy of science. In other words, it is the critical study of science and scientific knowledge. It is the critical study of scientific principles, assumptions, and results. This study is intended to determine their origin, value, and objective scope. We sometimes distinguish general epistemology from particular epistemology specific to each science. We then speak of the epistemology of physics, of biology, of the human sciences, of the epistemology of mathematics. History is knowledge of the past based on writings, oral testimonies, and fossils. Consequently, epistemology and history complement each other without being identified. On the other hand, there is no epistemology without history. Modern epistemology has its origins in the philosophy of knowledge of Immanuel Kant, 1724 to 1804, as well as in older traditions, notably Cartesian. It was established as an autonomous disciplinary field at the start of the 20th century. Why epistemology in mathematics? Mathematics is generally seen as a set of notions and concepts to remember and techniques to master. This is why students tend to perceive mathematics as a science without evolution. Thus, making them discover mathematics through its origins can be interesting for their learning and their motivation. Indeed, historical sources help in understanding the mathematics that surrounds us today. For example, the numbers and their meanings were built over a more or less long time and came from real needs for improvement of the old system. For example, the case of zero, enumeration. 
Thus, doing an epistemological study strengthens your personal culture as a mathematics teacher on the subject treated or to be treated. This will allow you to speak with ease and more conviction on this subject, and therefore better convey the message to your student. For example, you can use the epistemology of mathematics as a basic support for the problem situation in order to spark students' interest and get them into the activity. What is the interest of epistemology in a mathematics course? Using mathematical epistemology in a lesson gives a human dimension to all of these numbers and symbols and gives us, or more specifically, gives students a strong sense of identity as they continue to explore the world of mathematics. Because they need these stories, and these stories need them. That is why, as a math teacher, including the history of mathematics in your activities and lessons must become a moral imperative. The more your students learn about mathematics, the more your students learn about mathematicians, their challenges, their desires, the reasons for a theorem, a domain, a property, the more they discover to what extent the creation of mathematics was a fundamentally human process and how good it still is. In general, integrating the epistemology of a mathematical notion into a course will allow you to increase student motivation, reduce students' anxiety related to the subject taught, build a positive attitude toward mathematics, develop a better understanding of mathematical concepts, change the students' perception of mathematics, provide more opportunities for individual work and learning through discovery, help students understand the role and importance of mathematics in society, train the student to conduct a critical study. How to conduct an epistemological study. In order to conduct an epistemological study on a given notion, you can ask yourself the following question. What is it? When was it posed, defined, or demonstrated? Who designed it? Who defined it? Who demonstrated it? And with what? What is its origin, its value, its objective scope, its application, etc.? To get some answers to these questions, you can consult documents in libraries, on the internet, or on any other appropriate platform. To get your students involved, you can even give them presentations on the different concepts to explore. This is also teaching mathematics differently. Mathematical epistemology in practice. Suppose you are in fourth grade and you want to teach a class on first degree equations in R. How do you use mathematical epistemology in this case? As you know, your students have inevitably heard of X in solving equations from their academic elders a family member, or even an acquaintance, and as you would expect, not on good terms. So the mere sight of the term X can block the minds of more than one. We must therefore choose sparingly how to introduce this X in order to diffuse this belief. This is why, this is when you can bring in mathematical epistemology. Showing that the term X used in the equations is only a simplification of the word arithmos, the number used by the 3rd century Greek mathematician Diophantus, who later became a Shay under Arab influence in the 9th century, Ze in Spanish just after, before being simplified later in X by René Descartes in the 17th century, which denotes a, an unknown, any object. You can also show that an equation is just a simplification of a sentence. The equation X plus 3 equals 0, for example, corresponds to the sentence, find the real number, which increased by three is equal to zero. To introduce, for example, Pascal's triangle in form five, we can ask the following questions in order to conduct an epistemological study of this notion in order to motivate learners, encourage them to be curious, etc. What is Pascal's triangle? Who is Pascal? What is the use of this triangle? Is it a triangle? Why do we represent it as a triangle, etc.? A similar set of questions can be used to present any mathematical concept or result that requires epistemological study. Conclusion. As a math teacher, including the history of mathematics in your lessons is a moral duty and even an obligation. Analyzing and making a critical study of the studied concepts is an asset for the motivation of the learners. 
because learning and teaching mathematics in a different way cannot be done without mathematical epistemology. Mathematics has a history, and its history is still ongoing. This is why including the history of mathematics of a given notion in your lesson allows you to study the history of the problem, of the conjecture, of the proof, of the writing, of the rigor, of the intuition, of the error as obviousness in the mathematical practice of this notion. Conducting a critical study of a concept during your lessons motivates learners, strengthens their understanding, etc. The history of mathematics is our history. And our story is our story. We have to tell them, as you know, coming together is a start, staying together is progress, working together is success. Don't forget to share your ideas and questions in the forum. You can also go to the TTP COP platform via the following link. Alone, we go faster, and together, we always go further. See you next time.